Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Ignacio Tuberai. I'm with the Vision for Robotics Lab, and I'm going to talk about all research towards asynchronous land with the Venn canvas. At the Vision for Robotics Lab, we are mainly investigating ghost perception for robotics application. Um, some of the areas that we cover they are multi agent uh, visual land systems, as we can see here, two UIVs collaborating in a, a large scale scenario. We have some research on vision-based navigation and manipulation, as we can see here in, the, in an autonomous excavator. And we have some works also on place recognition. In, um, in, uh, in all these works, what we have been using is a traditional uh, camera. And these cameras exhibit some major limitations for robotics applications that the event cameras ca could potentially overcome. Right? So, Essentially, the event cameras are really fast in reacting to change. They have HDR capabilities and they consume really low power, which are excellent characteristics for a robotic application. But the most important characteristics that we're going to be focused on this talk is that they produce an asynchronous and sparse um, output. So these representations that we see here, they hide a little bit the nature of the event stream because it should be represented as a spatial temporal uh, stream. Here in this representation, we can see that obviously there is no notion of time discretization as in frames, but, and also we only capture changes in the scene, which give us the sparsity. This characteristic implies that traditional computer vision algorithms are not going to work. They could be adapted, but most importantly, we have the chance now to develop new novel emerging algorithms that are specific, specifically suited for this uh, sensing modality. And this is what we are going to be talking about in this talk. So we are going to uh, consider our goal is to try to replicate a traditional visual, uh, visual feature-based SLAM pipeline in which starting with from some images, we detect some features, in this case corners. And these corners detections lead us to some data association that puts uh, tracks together. And these feature tracks get further processed in the visual backend to estimate the pose or, a, uh, or the map. In the case of an event camera or an event driven uh, process, we start with an event and these events just imply the intensity change at a given pixel. Then from this event, we can determine that whether the feature set has been updated as in adding uh, features or removing all features. This uh, incremental change in the feature set lead us to an incremental change in the uh, track set, so um, some of the feature tracks will evolve based on this, and this consequentially leads to an update in the pose of the map. Um, this way, uh, you can see that incremental changes get propagated throughout the whole pipeline, and they start only with a single event. So we are going to be covering most of these uh, models in this um, pipeline, and we are going to be starting with feature detection. So for feature detection, we have to consider that the events get generated um, as a function of the scene, but also of the motion of the camera. And based on this, if we look at a corner, uh, we can see they have a really specific shape. For this, what we are going to do is we are going to use a surface of active events, which is a common representation that stores the time in the time step of the latest event in each location of the image plane. And this can be updated event by event in a really efficient manner. Then every time a new event arrives, uh, what we're going to do is look at the shape of the local surface of active events. And based on that, we're going to classify whether this event can be considered a corner or not. This allows us to uh, reduce even further the already sparse string of events into a string of corner events. These corner events um, are produced at event rates. So every time a new event uh, uh, is generated, we can determine whether this is a corner or not, which allow us to have this kind of, um, to inherit this continuity uh, in, in time, as in the original string of events. This has major implications because if we consider a frame-based detection, then there is detections, uh, there is gap between uh, consecutive detections. In an ideal uh, event driven detection, there is no gaps because the detection of the feature will happen as soon as the feature moves to the new, uh, a new pixel. What it implies is that we can do a really simple data association technique that uh, the, each of the detections is associated to the nearest neighbor detection that has happened in the past. 
This create, following this strategy, we create some kind of uh, graph that is made of small trees based on this nearest neighbor data association. On this, what we can do is further process this in an offline fashion to obtain what would be the, the feature tracks. Uh, we can see here that this is sufficient to do some high speed tracking that will, will not be possible with traditional regular cameras. The problem is that this really simple technique for data association is not sufficient to cope with uh, scenes that are really dense or where the corner detection might fail or the corners de uh, detected might be too close to each other. But just to summarize, the contribution of this first work that we published was to have a really fast event corner detection. We proposed a really simple technique uh, for co event corner association, and we were able to uh, retrieve um, the corner tracks in an online process. As we said, the main limitation of this method is that the data association is rather weak. So this is what we are going to be addressing in, or, uh, in the next work we are going to present. So, but we start exactly with the, uh, from the same point. Now we have already the detection done. So we have corner event detected, and then we're going to be looking at the local surface of active events that has been already explored for um, classifying this as a corner or not. And we are going to derive a lightweight descriptor out of this. This lightweight descriptor allows us to, when we are creating these trees of um, corners, we can already reject some of the um, matches that according to the descriptor distance. If we reject a match, then other uh, these new corners might just uh, evolve into their own tree. But also, it might happen that the, the descriptive distance is close enough, and then we just keep a set of hypotheses in form of branches um, in a single uh, feature tree. Eventually, this, if the branches are consistent enough, they will be promoted to a new tree. This will be a, a different feature track. Um, if, if not, they will be just be pruned. This way, we can actually uh, see here in the middle will be the full tree uh, as it is created. And the, in the, on the right, we can see that these feature tracks get processed in an online fashion at a synchronous, uh, asynchronously at an event rate uh, into feature tracks that are consistent. This allows us to obtain uh, way longer feature tracks compared to the pre previous method. And it performs really well if we look at the in layers uh, here, in which we can still perform, for instance, in HDR environments. The problem here, well, to summarize the, in this work, we have um, proposed a really simple local event descriptor that is lightweight. We have proposed an improved data association based on multi hypothesis, and we are able to obtain the feature tracks based on corners in this case in an online fashion. The main limitation here is that we are linking the uh, performance of the tracker to the performance of the detection, since you rely continuously on good corner detections for this method to work. In our next work, we are going to break this uh, dependency and we are going to rely directly on the events. So relying on, directly on the events, we're going to start with the basics. We have a feature, we have a state, that is the x, y coordinates and the uh, in-plane orientation. And we are going to consider around each of the features just the window of latest events. This is a uh, neighboring uh, events that have happened. And based on this, we can obtain a projection of these events based on the state, that's what we call the model. This model gets compared to a template of this feature according to some alignment score function. All these elements um, put together, they form an optimization problem that we are to solve. So in the optimization problem, we are trying to look for the optimal feature state that given an alignment function score of choice, um, considering the window of latest events and the template. The plan for this uh, optimization problem is that we have to op optimize for, for this at event rate. This is every time a new event comes. And this is infeasible to do it uh, up to millions of events per second. So we're going to go a little bit deeper on the structure of the problem and see if we can exploit some of the characteristics of the event camera. So in the case of an, uh, the original formulation in which we're trying to optimize for each of the events independently, 
uh, we have to keep in mind that there is con a continuous stream of information coming from the event camera. So what it implies is that if we solve this uh, event by event, then this will describe an almost continuous trajectory in the image plane. And this is something that we can uh, exploit specifically. So imagine that starting with our initial optimal state, we are defining a set of hypotheses sur surrounding this uh, initial state. And we are going to only evaluate the optimization function in those states and taking which one is the best at each time. If one of them gets better than the current optimal state, we are going to jump into it and create a new set of, hypothet of hypothetical states. Essentially, what we are doing is just discretizing, discretizing the space of solutions and e uh, evaluating the hypothesis, uh, the alignment score in each of these hypotheses. Um, this is way more efficient than trying to solve the optimization problem as a whole every single event. Obviously, the problem is that in, in reality, the alignment score is not as smooth, uh, but most problematically is that we have to actually still evaluate the alignment score for each hypothesis at real time for each of the events. And this is a costly operation. So in a second iteration of this paper that we just published last year in GMDC, um, the original formulation considered a hypothesis and its alignment score depends on a, a window of, uh, of events and the template. But every time a new event comes, then we are updating the window of events and the template, and it implies that we have to re-evaluate re the alignment score from scratch. What we propose in this second iteration is that we are going to propose an uh, incremental alignment score that doesn't depend on these changes on the event window and the template directly, but it relies on the previous solution uh, of the alignment score and incrementally change that according to the newest event that has just arrived. This allows us to have a temp uh, fall uh, factor on the computational performance. So this way we can actually obtain um, a good performance in a variety of scenarios. We are able to perform a really accurate um, feature tracking, even in high speed at real time. And um, why would we do, uh, I mean, we're not the first ones that we're doing feature tracking, right? Uh, using event cameras. But traditionally, most of the other approaches, what, do they, what they do is they rely on batches of events. And these batches of events necessarily create some kind of tracking iterations, essentially reverting back to a frame-like representation. This um, the, um, defines a little bit the purpose of using an event camera that produces asynchronous uh, data. So in our case, we are going to propose we are proposing an asynchronous tracking strategy for doing to do that, in which every time a new event comes, we can directly uh, update a feature track. So with this in mind, these last works have, been, uh, have introduced a new hypothesis-based um, optimization framework, and we have been using this for tracking directly on the event stream without relying on coordinate detections anymore. Um, in a second iteration of that paper, we define what would be an incremental form for this framework and achieve real-time capabilities. Most of these works are publicly available, available in case uh, you would like to check them. Um, these are all the works that we have published so far, and we are investigating how all these uh, pieces can be put together to estimate the state that will be the pose or the map in the visual backend in an event-driven fashion. And we have always some hints that it could be done uh, using, again, the same hypothesis-based optimization, but uh, using a pose score instead of an alignment score. So I would like to conclude with some remarks about event driven perception. I believe that event by event or event driven algorithms are the natural way to uh, process and the output of uh, event cameras just because they explicitly exploit the sparsity and the synchronicity of the data. They also reduce a little bit the number of assumptions up to some extent on trying to tune for the motion of the camera or try to tune for the amount of texture that you're expecting to see. On the other hand, they require, a, they require a really careful design in order to keep a minimum efficiency that this can be run in realistic applications in real time. And how to justify the algorithms given the fact that you are looking at one event at each time. And most importantly, especially in these years that are um, 
every time, uh, every year is coming a new event camera with higher resolution is then of scal scalability and how we are going to scale up to higher resolutions. So with that, I would like to conclude my talk. Uh, thank you very much for very much for your attention.